All life organisms need energy to survive. On Earth, raw energy comes in the form of sunlight. Through the magic of photosynthesis, plants convert this to glucose. This glucose, when broken down the proper way, can produce ATP, or the energy for living cells. Both animals and plants have to convert this into ATP through the chemical process of glycolysis. The definition of glycolysis is, in fact, present in its name. The prefix glyco means related to sugars, and the suffix lysis means to break down. Glucose is the fundamental building block of all carbohydrates. When one eats a food containing carbohydrates, they are consuming glucose. There are 10 steps in the process of glycolysis. Before we dive into that, let's look into the structure of the two wanted end parts, pyruvic acid and ATP. Pyruvic acid is used to create various other important molecules, including more ATP. ATP is basically adenosine triphosphate. The most important part of the ATP are these three phosphate groups in triphosphate. A phosphate group is made up of a phosphorus atom and four oxygen atoms. Phosphate groups are very unstable due to the negative charges of the oxygen molecules inside them. It would be like trying to put three magnets that are repelled close to each other. Therefore, the bonds holding these phosphate groups have lots of energy stored in them. Now back to glycolysis, the process first involves adding a phosphate group from an ATP molecule to glucose. After adding a phosphate group, the glucose molecule, now glucose 6-phosphate, is rearranged to form fructose 6-phosphate, which is then converted into fructose 1-6-bisphosphate using another ATP molecule. The result is split into two molecules, which can each be used to produce ATP. Each molecule produces two ATP each. Thus, the net ATP produced is two ATP, as two ATP is used and four is produced. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye!